everyone. Welcome back to another assembly. And Jake is going to start us off today. Hello to all of our viewers out there. I bet you were surprised to see us. Didn't think we'd have the energy to rock you on a Tuesday. Well, we are prepared and ready to go. And now with the Pledge of Allegiance, we have the delightful Dana Hanuda from the Freshers class. Please rise wherever you are and show respect to the American flag while she leads us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. There's nothing better than when an actual member of the honor board is able to read the honor code for us. Who can do just that is David Fleming. You know the way, David. Take us there. Hi, Scots. I'm David Fleming, a junior on the honor board. I'm going to recite the honor pledge. As a member of St. Andrew's School, I pledge my honesty, academic integrity, sportsmanship, and stewardship to the school community, and I expect others to be responsible and to do the same. Honor above all. Go Scots. And now for a bit of seriousness. As Avery mentioned, last week, Sunday marked three years since the tragedy at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. As they are literal neighbors down the road, this horrible experience struck us all incredibly close to home. Thank you to everyone who wore burgundy on Friday to show their support. We felt it would be appropriate for us to further acknowledge the day by inviting speaker Dr. Matthew Hips to share a few words. Hips is a political science professor at Dalton State whose friend, was tra whose friend tragically lost his life on February 14, 2018. Let's listen in. Hey, St. Andrews. So February 14th, 2018 began like every other day. I came to work, I was teaching my classes and a notification came across my phone that there had been a shooting at a high school in Florida. Soon thereafter, I got a text from my friend Gwen asking if I had heard from Scott who worked at the school where the shooting had occurred. I assured her that I'm, nothing was wrong, that she shouldn't worry and that I'm sure things were crazy and he would get back to her as soon as he could. I went back to teaching my class and after class, I was inundated with phone calls and text messages from people that were asking if I had any information. And we began to put together details and none of them were overly good. I remember that my wife and I sat watching the news, waiting for information, but I told myself I wasn't gonna believe anything until somebody that I care about and love confirmed what I had heard had happened. At about nine o'clock, a student came on the news and said that her teacher had been shot and said it was Mr. Beagle. I immediately turned the TV off and I refused to believe it. At about two in the morning, I got a phone call from my friend Quinn telling me that Scott hadn't made it. I'll never forget that phone call. The silence after she said my name told me that something horrible had happened. She asked me to call all of our friends to tell them because she just couldn't do it. I spent the next 15 minutes calling people telling them that Scott had passed. The rest is sort of a whirlwind. We got on a plane, flew to Florida, went to Scott's funeral. I was fortunate enough to speak at Scott's funeral. And as I reflect back on everything that happened, I think the thing that I take away is Scott's heroism. But unlike most people who sort of see Scott as a hero for that day in February in 2018, I think the most heroic thing about Scott was his innate ability to find the best in people and to bring it out. Scott always helped people who hadn't yet found their voice find a way to bring that voice to the forefront. He was unbelievable at, at taking people who were sitting on the sidelines, who felt like they weren't included, and helping them to find a place where they fit, where their talents could shine. He made small things into big things. He made moments that shouldn't have been significant, significant in people's lives. He could look at you, smile at you, tell you a joke, and make you feel like you were the most important person in the room at that moment. To me, that was Scott's heroism. His ability to take the minute and make it into something huge. And in that vein, I think one of the most important things that we can do is remember that it's possible to turn tragedy into action. You look at people like his mom, Linda, who has dedicated her life to fighting for 
gun justice and, and lobbying on behalf of making guns harder to get access to and to make schools safer for kids. She took this horrible moment in her life and used it to transform the lives of other people. People like David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez, who found themselves thrust into a position of power and leadership and found that they wore it well. The reality is that life comes at us quicker than we can often manage. Sometimes life slams into us on an idle Tuesday and changes the way that our world works. But we can choose to allow the circumstances of our lives to defeat us or to be the people who dictate what the circumstances of our lives mean. We can use our pain to empower other people. And that's the legacy that Scott truly leaves behind. Thanks. Thank you, Professor Hamps. And now for a very special message on a wonderful initiative known as Her Drive. Here we go. Hi, my name is Sasha Zemet. And my name is Julia Rocha, and we are in the class of 2024. Did you know that one fifth of women struggle to buy menstrual products on a monthly basis? Well, we have a local solution to that, the Her Drive. This drive is a Chicago-based nonprofit organization that provides bras, hygiene, and menstrual products to citizens in need. We are going to be setting up our own drive throughout the month of February and beginning of March. In this drive, we will be collecting these products either at school through our donation box, or we can pick up any donations at your home. All you have to do is email us and let us know when or if you would like us to pick up these donations in your mailbox or outside your homes. This is a list of items that you can donate. All of our donations will be going to different Palm Beach County shelters that are in desperate need of help. We hope that we can count on you to make a difference in these women's lives. Email us if you have any inquiries or if you would like to set up a donation. Thank you and go Scots! Ready for sports? The 2021 varsity water polo team kicked off their first game of the, sec of the season against Suncoast High School a week or so ago, making it the first game since the pandemic cut their season short in March of last year. The night started with a dominating 23-2 victory by the girls. Erin Miller tied a school record with 12 goals. Lucy Miller scored five goals and recorded four assists in six steals. Jordan Brady and Gabby Webburn both got on the scoreboard with multiple goals and assists. A dominating defense and relentless attack by the returning players and newcomers Sarah Miller and Aspen Gersper made the game the success that it was. The girls' game provided added confidence and excitement to the boys' team, who played shortly after. The Scots thrashed to a 13-3 victory against the Suncoast Chargers. Senior goalkeeper Landon Sodi recorded 11 saves in the goal with multiple steals and assists. Andras led the scoring with five goals, followed by Ryan Nordheim and Julian Balbi with two goals apiece. First-year players Mario Suarez and Ator scored their first goal uh, in what was a very memorable night and fantastic start to the season. We love you. After COVID-19, abruptly halted the St. Andrews Boys and Girls 2020 campaigns to defend their state titles, the Scots finally returned to action versus familiar district foes. After almost a year-long hiatus, the Scots were ready to prove why they felt robbed of their opportunity to repeat last season. The boys, led by number one senior and University of Chicago commit Jacob Lowen, hit the ground running with a 7-0 win. Not to be outdone, the girls behind junior Santiana C at number one also carded a 7-0 victory over the Thunder Wolves of Oxbridge Academy. The Scots will face two more Palm League opponents this week as North Broward Prep visits St. Andrews tomorrow, followed by an away match at Culver Prep the following afternoon. We love you and good luck. I'd also like to mention the basketball team is on their way for another state championship. And now for the big announcement of the week. We are excited to formally declare that next week has been declared an official St. Andrews Upper School holiday. Woo! Oh, yeah! All right! We have no school next week. We have no school next week. No, you silly thing. It's not a week off, but it's actually something better than it. It's Student Council Winterfest. Woo! Mr. Glick, pop that graphic onto the screen so that I can better explain it. As you can see, it's a little bit like the winter version of Halloween. 
Each day there is a different dress up theme along with a special menu. She's right, you know. Monday is Midnight Monday, which means you get to wear your pajamas. Next is Tailgate Tuesday, where you get to rep your favorite sports or colleges. Wacky Wednesday is fairly self explanatory. Get crazy with it. Just nothing that is going to be offensive or immodest. Time Travel Thursday is throw back to whatever decade you wish. And Friday wraps it up with anything that has a Scots logo on it. What about food? I don't want to steal sweet little red hen thunder for the next week. So let me just highlight the fact that we're going to have pizza bagels and mac and cheese bites for the first time in SA history. In addition to the return of favorites such as curly fries and curly fries. And of course, the Starlight Pretzel Diner. I can't wait. I literally can't wait. I have a confession to make y'all. Henry Pollock, sophomore class president, and his menu time are my favorite part of the virtual assembly. Thank God Sweet Little Red Hen was added to the full-time staff. Let's hope that Henry steps it up and rises to the occasion with another great segment. Over to you, Sweet Little Red Hen. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another segment of this week's menu time. To start off today, Tuesday, we have barbecue pulled pork, barbecue rotisserie baked chicken, and mac and cheese. On Wednesday, we have beef and broccoli, sticky rice, tofu and vegetables, and some spring rolls. Thursday, we have breakfast for lunch with some scrambled eggs, pancakes, and tater tots. And Friday, to end off the week, we have chicken tenders, mashed potatoes, chicken and gravy, and that will do it for this week's menu time. Since we had pancakes this week, I was thinking of making pancakes, but I've already done that. So instead, I'm making a slight edit and I will be making some homemade waffles for you all this week. I hope you enjoy. How they say you got the real thing when nothing else matters. I love you like that. I love you like that. I love you like that. I love you. I love you. I love you like that. All I want to say is I got the real thing and nothing else Get deep down, get deep down, get deep down, get deep down. It looks like it pays off to be a full time staff member at the virtual assembly. It looks like they've increased his production budget ever since he got that promotion. Did you see that CGI hen? Anyway, now it's time for the birthdays. Roll it. Another week of the birthday, upper evil, upper con, not birthday fairy. But um, so let's see the birthdays. Happy birthday to everyone with a birthday as usual. And let's spin the wheel. Oh, and it's one of our very own, Ange. Happy birthday, Ange. And I think you are, if you can hear this, I think you're being sent to Mr. Purcell's office to get your gift. I think the evil leprechaun might still be on rest breaker. I don't really know what's going on, but just go to Mr. Purcell's office when you can. Administration building. <coughs> um, hello? Yes, hello? Could I speak to Matt Purcell, please? Yes, he's here. Well, there are some students that aren't wearing masks. Okay, hold on one second. Yes, they're all the way on the other side of campus. Over by the middle school, it'll take forever to get there. <laughs> 
Mr. Perso, there are a bunch of kids near the middle school without masks. No masks? On this on my campus? No, no, not today. Not today, no maskers. Dean of Students. Well, that sounds nice. Oh, I like this a lot. I could get used to this. But first, we have to send an email to all the teachers telling them that they need to catch students being good and send them to my office. Hello. Hello, why are you here? I completed the water bottle challenge. I brought my bottle in five times in a row and I've been recycling. You've been recycling? You've been helping the environment? Detention for a month! No. Now get out of my office! I won't stand for such things here! Students being good! I never want to hear of that again! Hello! What are you Why doing? are you here? I was mean to kids on purpose. You were mean to your classmates? To all freshmen. To all freshmen? <laughs> yes. Well done! Thank you. You can go. You're the best student at St. Andrews. Thank you. Now that's what I like. <laughs> Students being terrible. <laughs> I'm here to retrieve my gift. I saw that the, the wheel landed on me. Well, I'm going to give you something better than that gift because I'm going to let you in on a little secret. What? It's my birthday, too. Oh, my God, we're twinsies. So I'm going to give you some of my evil powers. Wow. Have fun with them. <laughs> hey, I think we can use the senior breeze by even though we're freshmen and sophomore. Me, too. Not so fast. This is your unlucky day. I have the powers from the evil leprechaun. I'm going to zap you out of here. It worked. Thank you, evil leprechaun. <laughs> and that just about wraps it up for us. Have a great week and keep sending out love in those virtual Valentines. Stay strong and remember, live, learn and love. Peace. Good luck.